Well, he joined me back on the river, Ada, this afternoon. I was hoping to possibly get the stalks again this week. Um, as I know, they were released on the Nepa estate on the 10th of August, I believe. But I've heard today that they've headed for France for now. So I don't know whether they are coming back um, or whether that's them gone for the, for the winter now. I'm assuming as they were released there that that's where they will come back to to nest in the spring. But it's, uh, it has been raining today, but it has now stopped. A little bit of a breeze. Hopefully the microphone is, uh, and the GoPro is better than the mobile phone without the microphone on. It's forecast for about 20%, 25% chance of rain. We had the 20% earlier and we did actually have the rain and it feels quite rainy. So I wouldn't be surprised if we get a bit of a sprinkle again like we did last week. So I know I'm not probably going to see those today, the stalks that is, but I think we, we've got chances of oyster catchers. Then we had some sandlings down here last week and obviously we've got the egrets. Uh, saw some shags here last week. So I want to spend some time wandering up the river, down on the, on the sand. I've uh, got my wellies with me today, so that should be a bit better than my trainers last week. They got wet and claggy. Okay, let's go and see what we can find. Well, getting down can be a bit challenging. But we'll aim for the same stretch as we did last week. And although it's going to be quite claggy, it shouldn't be too bad. It's nice and clear. It's quite chilly. In fact, I've just seen a couple of lads getting out of a blow up kayak and uh, yeah, shut up to his waist. Now, I could hear the oyster catchers, but at the moment, because we're so close to the airport and the railway line, which is where the stalks were last week. I do helicopter um, lessons here. So this helicopter, especially this time of year, is up and down all day long. Now that was an oyster catcher I just heard. Let's see if, uh, let's put this lot down and see if we can find him. Well, I even think the sun's gonna come out for, for a short spell. I haven't found any, I wanna get down a bit. I'm just gonna, just gonna drop, a, drop a height because I really wanna get as close to ground level as I can with these birds. You want to try and get as eye level to them as you possibly can. To put you on the same level as them kind of connects you with the animal a lot better. Right. Now, can't see where they went. Ah. Can't remember what they were. They were here last week. I did look them up and my brain's gone blank. But I will put it below here. The only thing is it's on the tip of my tongue. But I am, unfortunately, renowned for having the crappiest memory on earth. My wife thinks I just need a bit of brain training. But I did inform her that I needed a brain for that to work. I knew I should have put my shorts on because I want to kneel down, but I would like to get lower, but I just can't. Now we are literally, oh, we are um, at 3.20 and I think it was 3.03 for low tide, but it still looks fast flowing. The turnstones are quite, quite a widespread bird. Um, pretty much all the way around our coastlines in the UK. I know they tend to head more south for the winter and they um, 
they're like these rocky rocky river areas and they've got a very distinctive kind of tree 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 sound which is why I do audio Lee uh, confuse them with the oyster catchers which I think I might have done this morning when I this afternoon when I got here really has got a gorgeous kind of babbling brook sound when the tide's nearly out and it's just catching the tops of the rocks. It's quite a fast, it's quite a fast flowing river. I've uh, canoed up it many times and if you are canoeing back uh, when it's at full flow it's very easy to miss your, very easy to miss your turn off. And Kayaking, I don't think it's as much of a problem, but with the tra traditional canoe that I have, battling against that fast flow is uh, it's quite hard going. Okay, let's, let's wander further down and see what else we can find. Let me just show you the floor of this. It is literally just shells. The whole bed is just made up of shells. I had just found the heron, um, but obviously school holiday, the kids are off and they thought it'd be more fun to, um, to chase it, which was, uh, which is always nice. Don't know how far it's gone. I'm not sure they should be down there unattended. I mean, not my kids, but turnstones are quite regularly flitting between kind of one little island and another so I'm hoping that maybe I can get some some in-flight shots of them today we'll loosen that a bit yeah we'll loosen that a bit as well that's better and where the kids are there was a bit of a, a cluster a group of turnstones kind of 10 or 12 of them and um, I missed them taking off because I was too busy to talk about the kids chasing off the birds. All too far away now. Okay, we keep on walking. When I was born and bred down in these lands on the south coast and my true passion wildlife is up north amongst the rugged mountains but when you find a small pocket of life giving water and even on a day like today where there's not a lot going on we've still seen quite a number of creatures and wildlife it's the makeup of the river along with the sound of the running water especially when it's low tide because you can, you can see the, the directions, how it splits up, how it goes around, bends, rejoins back up to the main river. And even at low tide, the bit in the very middle is deeper than I could walk through. Like I said, there may not be an immense amount today, but we have seen the turnstones, we've seen the oyster catchers, um, egret, uh, black-headed gull, common gull which obviously being the coastal area there's always a lot of swans and their cygnets so that's six just in this one kind of quarter of a mile stretch and that's kind of where I've just hung around today and by the railway line where you've got this giant s-bend 
fly, I would fly the drone, but we are actually close to the airport. So uh, I'm well within inside the, the no-fly zone. It's very therapeutic, albeit harsh on the knees, because I want to get down with the birds, birds level. Well, I am going to wander down towards the kind of mud flats, the kind of estuary part of it. That's usually busier at full tide, which I can then get the canoe into, which is another video I want to make. Right, let's head down. The terms are a lovely little bird and they remind me of the plovers and the little wing plovers that I see in Scotland each time we go up. Now that sounds like an oyster catcher. Now that I can hear both, I can hear a very distinct difference. Much louder, much more of a scream than a, than a kind of a scree scree. Just got to find where they are. I bet they're behind the bank. I can definitely hear them. Plenty of pigeons. Plenty of turnstones now. But oh, there he is. There he is. The oyster catcher for me, Scotland, without a doubt, because when we travelled the UK in 2015, we did kind of lands into John O'Groats and everything in between. One of the sites that we stayed on uh, in a small caravan was in the Trotucks. And the site we were in had a lovely uh, large entrance, obviously, for people to swing their caravans in and out of. And it had a lovely mowed lawn section. Hold on, I'm going to stand up. And either side of the entrance were these giant, kind of five foot wide, two and a half, three foot high bowls full of soil, full of gorgeous plants, and nested in the middle of these on both sides were oyster catchers. And this is kind of mid May, so they were in full. Uh, all breeding and shouting and screaming and that's really the first time that I had seen them on a regular basis in fact we got close enough I was just taking pictures with their mobile phone it's before I really got into photography again so whenever I hear them I just think of Scotland right now I really want to find out where that where that egret went to I had found it and then the kids chased it away so I've just glassed up and down that side of the bank, which it always seems to be in. They always seem to be in. But I can't see him at the moment. Unless that is him right down there. No. Nope. Well, I've found him just the other side of this bridge a couple of times now. So, I'm hoping he's either one behind the bank or, oh, that's him. Here he comes, on cue. And like I was saying, during the, this time of year, it's harder to find really exciting subjects to film and photograph. But you can always count on the egrets to show up, especially around the edges of low tide and especially on the River Ada. I filmed them last week, or I filmed one of these last week, and he had a really high success rate of dipping and catching, and he was dipping and catching every 30 seconds or so. Maybe we'll get the same kind of success rate from this one. I must admit, I'd like to catch some in flight, but I only ever seem to manage to catch them flying out and catch them flying in. I think it's because you're already in focus, getting ready to catch them when they fly off. But I love the way before they pounce, they, they, they bend their knees and their foots feet go forwards they get low and you can see they're like a little kind of wound up spring that's very interesting to see
and maybe some of them come out we'll see let's have a look see yeah that's all right not amazingly sharp but i'm happy with that as an image i think i'm, I think I'm gonna wander down the river towards the mud flats which is the ospb section i mean there's no signs for the ospb there but uh, as a member you look at the list and see where where places are right let's have a wander down there Now this is the area that I always look forward to because just before it hits high tide this raised bit gets completely flooded and you just have a few of these plants poking out on the top and it's quite navigable with a canoe and some of the best kind of chill out canoeing I've had has been here because you've got all these houseboats along here that range from 40s X World War II vessels um, to houseboats to pretty much anything really. It's a couple there that have got planes and cars built into them as part of the uh, part of their lodgings. But when this floods, it's always busy with egrets, and as it begins to recede as the tide goes out all the waders head for this bit first so it's always a good spot to tuck myself over in the corner and then watch the tide come out the only downside to that is is that it's very difficult to get the eye, the eye height perspective because it's very boggy and the banks are raised by about two or three feet from where the edge of the water tends to flow. So you're always looking down on the subject, which isn't ideal. So I very rarely photograph when I'm doing that, but I do like to sit there with the binoculars, get a kind of head count and uh, see what's around to come back in different areas. Well, guys, I'm going to call that a day. I've had a very enjoyable uh, nearly two and a half hours. Um, photographed and filmed seven species, I believe, today. So, you know, I know it's not, not spring and it's not the autumn. And we're in the middle of the summer. Luckily, it's a bit overcast, so it hasn't been as busy. We've had some rain today. So I think it's kept the hordes away. Low tide is a very interesting time for the birds um, and it gives you an opportunity to observe their feeding habits. The, uh, the, the group of three egrets tended to follow each other around so uh, I'm going to look at that when I get home. I'm going to assume it's, it's uh, parent and offspring. One of them had some really long uh, feathers at the back so maybe that's the, the parent. But the weather's been good to me. Uh, the wildlife has been good to me. They haven't been particularly flighty and there's been plenty of what we have come out to see today. So I've had a, an incredible couple of hours. If you've liked today's video, then give it a thumbs up. That really helps. And if you don't subscribe and you'd like to, that would be awesome because that helps the channel grow. And if you'd like to know when my next video is out, click on the notification bell and that'll let you know as soon as it's out. So all that leaves me to say is thank you for watching. Until next time, bye for now.